Hello guys and welcome back. We are going to take a look at the subscriber suggested company Invitec Corporation. This is a New York Stock Exchange company with about 3000 employees right now. Look at this beta 1.75 meaning that it moves uh, quite a lot compared to the stock market. Interesting. It's a healthcare company and as you will see here it's a medical, gen a medical genetics company it integrates uh, genetic information into ma mainstream medicine to improve healthcare of people in the United States, Canada and internationally. Now, if we take a little bit of a closer look at the financials of the company, you will see that it's today it's actually up 15%, but overall it has a $1 billion market cap. But look at this uh, trend over here. This is the last one month, but take a look at this year. The year has been going down and down and down and down. I can't find a bottom and uh, it's sitting at 88% down In uh, if we take a look at its one year high, which is absolutely bonkers here. Let's take a look at uh, the, the IPO days and where they are right now they're actually way way below that now that doesn't mean that they are a bad company of course and it doesn't mean that they are not a buy generally speaking uh, right now when we're having a high inflationary environment i do like healthcare sec the healthcare sector i do like owning companies that are in the health healthcare sector because it's one of the non-discretionary stuff that people need to have they need to be buying services in terms of uh, healthcare in order to survive because it's a prime prime need for people so I do like owning some uh, healthcare. Now that doesn't mean I, I like to own this one. We'll examine that. Let's take a little bit of a closer look first. I want to take a look at the news here because it's interesting. Invite is Cathy Wood's big loss uh, that, uh, as the article says, can be your big gain. Very, very handy uh, module here, here where you can see the um, what is happening right now with this company. Very quickly, just taking a look at the descriptions even. You will see here is one of the worst performing stocks in Cathy Wood's Genomic Revolution ETF. So she picks the worst stuff as usual. Down over 90% from the highs of 56. And the stock has become so cheap, it now, tra now trades at under half of the book value and roughly 2.4 sales. But um, it may have been a terrible acquisition back at 56 uh, bucks. But uh, don't forget that it is now uh, sitting at four bucks and a company that's at, at 50 and at four is a completely different uh, company in terms of its stock price. So we do want to analyze and see whether it makes sense to buy it at this price point because this is about investing. And so the P ratio is negative here, two point minus, uh, minus 2.17. And uh, it used to be even more. It, thinks, it seems like it's getting a little bit better. Price to free cash flow ratio also negative. But look at this outstanding shares growth here. They have been uh, diluting investors like crazy since 2017, and they only started stopping. <laughs> started stopping. <laughs> they only they only started to uh, kind of cut down on um, outstanding shares issuance at about uh, 2021 really where actually if you take a look at the one year the stock price started going down this is when they stopped issuing they still were issuing they were still issuing, issuing shares but much less uh, in terms of how quickly they were issuing shares so they have issued about 400 percent they have quadrupled they are uh, they have almost qu more than quadrupled their outstanding shares count uh, from back in 2017 that's a, that's a massive red flag and uh, the free cash flow total liabilities is negative because their free cash flow is going to be negative. Five year revenue growth is increasing. That's the nice thing about the company. But remember, these are low absolute values. So you would expect the company to increase the revenues uh, quite a lot. And uh, yeah, this can happen with kinds of, of companies that are not even in the billion range right now. But look at this net income growth is going down and look at this free cash flow growth going down even more which is not something that we like to see. Of course, you're going to see the total equity growth increasing because outstanding shares. Uh, they have been issuing shares like crazy. And uh, yeah, the article points to a price to sales ratio that's uh, like 2.5 or right now it's sitting at 2.04 actually, which is indeed rather low here. And um, debt to equity ratio of 0 0.4, current ratio 6.14. Looks like a solvent company. That's a good thing at least. But look at these returns and look at this net income margin. It's absolutely terrible here. I don't like to see that. Let's take a look at the financial statements. Uh, what's going on with a net income statement? With an income statement, uh, 68 million to 460, what we examined earlier. But look at this net income minus, minus, and actually increasing um, minus uh, results here. Apart from 2021, which was a better year for the company, but still in the negative. The balance sheet is going to tell us of a story that um, has an uh, increasing equity here. But remember, we are taking a look at additional paid in capital because the company has been issuing shares like crazy. And they kind of stopped at 2021, if you remember. And this is why it's uh, it's probably going to be their like, uh, top, top uh, year in terms of additional paid in capital. And we're probably going to have uh, some less additional paid in capital in the next few years because of that. 
but the total equity has been increasing because of the extra funding from uh, stockholders. However, we're not seeing money from operations. Remember, net income is actually negative here, and it becomes uh, even more negative in terms of operating activities uh, when we add back all the uh, cash expenses and uh, adjust for the operating activities income. Uh, and net cash used for investing activities also lightly in the negative, some acquisitions going on, and uh, financing activities, it is positive because the company has been issuing common stock, as you'll see, and uh, getting debt, getting extra debt. So the cash that the company has is about, it's about 1 billion and the free cash flow, look at this, it's negative and they lost 614 million just last year. Again, remember that the cash they have at hand is 933. So this is not looking great. Let's take a look at the stock evaluation tool here. And um, the company's re revenue has been increasing massively, although 220 was their, probably their worst year, it's still pretty nice. So we can go high even, like 2022 and 25 here, this is very high in terms of uh, projected revenue growth. But what are we going to do with the net income margins is the question, because the margins of the company have been absolutely horrid here. Look at this one. When you compare revenues to the net income that the company is making, they are losing tons of net income, even though they are making a lot of, re of uh, revenue here. And it seems to be growing worse and worse. We definitely have to go uh, marginally positive here because otherwise uh, the model won't work at all if we're not making any money. And the free cash flow margins that we can use, again, they are all over the place because uh, net income is negative and free cash flow is negative. So you cannot really pay much attention to this one, but you can use something that is fairly typical, let's say 50, 70, 80 and 90, waiting for this to happen eventually for the company. Uh, again, you cannot really use the free cash flow margin because you have none right now. So you kind of have to project what's going to happen in the future. And so an annual return of 13% because I typically want to be making that out of any single stock. I can make 10% out of an ETF and S&P 500 ETF uh, annually will give you about 10%. You have more risk here owning a single stock. So you need to be making more. And if we hit calculate, let's take a look at this. Even now at the current price of 4 or 32, we're still expensive. And remember, I have made a lot of assumptions here in terms of net income margins of the company and, and the free cash flow margins. Right now, the company is uh, very much in the negative and uh, their net income is uh, seems to be basically at the same place and worse. Look at the 2017 one, minus 123, and uh, this year is actually worse than five years ago. So when is this company going to become profitable is the question. Maybe never. And this is why I don't like investing in these types of companies unless I have like a very clear path to profitability, which I don't see here. And so I would probably stay away from this one, even though it has been absolutely completely buttered down. The only way that I could see someone playing this one is because it's massively down. Maybe they want to trade it for a little while now that it's going higher, but I probably wouldn't hold this one for a long uh, hold or for a long holder here because again, the financials are not looking that great. Thank you for watching the video. Remember to like, leave a like and subscribe. And if you are not a Patreon, consider becoming one because then you get uh, unlimited access to this tool, the one that I'm using in my videos. And you also support the channel. So thank you for watching. And uh, you can also find the uh, links to Patreon and this uh, portal in the description box below this video. And uh, thanks for watching this one again. In the meantime, remember to take a look at this video that I made earlier. And in this one, I am discussing Alibaba and what we're expecting from its earnings report in about a week or so. And thanks for watching again. I'll see you soon. Bye bye.